got to groove when the spirit says groove. You gotta be grooving, you gotta be grooving. You've got to groove when the spirit says groove. You have got to groove when the spirit says groove. You've got to groove, oh Lord. You've got to groove when the spirit says groove. 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 Before I walk and now I do the one two step. I heard the spirit and it said the groove, yeah. That's why I do my own shuffle, tapping feet, clapping hands. If you could talk, you could sing, if you could walk, you could dance. Spirit told me bust the track with the vocals. And I come around your city rocking with the locals. Fading out, got my eyes closed. I think the Lord talking to me, gotta get up all in my zone. Candle gazing after doing Kundalini. I wrote it in my journal, trying to find the true meaning. It ain't gonna happen overnight, I really ain't stressing. I'ma get the blessing. I don't need Google directions, I just follow spirit. I think I start to hear it. The elders talk about alignment, I just start to get near it. Walk along the path, with it without a clue. When the spirit says do, I make it do what it do. Come on. Gotta do what it do. I know right now with some spirit talking to you inside and it's telling you to do something. And whatever that is, go with it. Alright? Spirit says do. Spirit says do. Spirit says do. And you know what? I'm gonna do what I do. You go ahead and do what you do. And that's how we gonna do what we do. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Montclair. My name is Marcus Greyhawk. I am the Director of Music Ministries and my pronouns are he, him and his. If you are watching this service live on Facebook, we invite you to share your name in the comments. The music today is offered by a number of different people. Our closing hymn will be led by Scott Moore and you're also going to hear our Chalice Choir. But let's begin with a hymn that was written by the Jewish cantor and songwriter Linda Hirschhorn. Linda writes, Songs should give wings to our prayers. Songs should give color to our grief and joy. Songs should express the depths of our greatest yearnings. This is called Circle Round for Freedom. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for children of our children keep 
you are, wherever you come from, whatever age, identity, history, ability, gender, sexual orientation, or political affiliation, you are welcome to bring your full self here. Grounded in faith, we come together to nurture the soul, inspire hope, and bring into being a more just and loving world. I'm Reverend Anya Sandler-Michael. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm Reverend Scott Sandler-Michael. My pronouns he, him, and his. If you're joining us at 9.30, please continue with us today for our annual meeting at 10.30 a.m. The business of the congregation is essential, as we are essential. Members can vote. All can participate. Check your email and Realm announcements for the link. It's time now to light our chalice, a beacon to guide us through these times. Perhaps you have a chalice or candle at home, anything that you can illumine. Let's light our collective chalices as we share our chalice lighting affirmation. Let us open, open our, our eyes to see what is beautiful. beautiful. Let, Let us open our, our minds to, to learn what, what is true. true. Let, Let us open our hearts to, to love one another. another. The community invocation that follows has words from Margaret E. Weiss. The congregation is not a place. It is a people. The congregation is not only a steeple above the tree line, streets and cars, rather it is a people proclaiming to the world that we are here for the work of healing and of justice. 
The congregation is not walls built stone upon stone held together by mortar, but rather person linked with person linked with person. All ages and genders and abilities, a community built on the foundation of compassion, faith, and love. The congregation is not just a set of doors open on Sunday morning, but the commitment day after day and moment after moment of our hearts creaking open the doors of welcome to the possibility of new experiences and radical welcome. The congregation is not simply a building, a steeple, a pew. The congregation is the gathering together virtually of all the people and experiences and fear and love and hope in our resilient hearts, gathering however we can to say to the world, welcome, come in. Lay down your heartache and pick up hope and love. For the congregation is us, each and every one of us, together a beacon of hope to this world that so sorely needs it. Comfort, sing, speak, dance, your presence is a comfort to me. And we enter into this space of depth as we each are called, finding a soft meditation, a deep reflection, an ardent prayer, each as we are called, but all together. And we enter into this space by hearing the lamentations, the requests, and the remembrances of our community. Let us hear one another to heal one another. Claudine Ohian lights a candle for her father, Meyer Ohian, who died on May 23rd after a long struggle with dementia. Claudine and her sister Charlene Di Natale were at his bedside, listening to his favorite music as they reminisced about his life. They are grateful he was able to transition in peace and comfort. Judith Rue lights a candle for her Worthy Now Ministry Network pen pal, Felipe Lopez Confer. Incarcerated in Love Lady, Texas, he just recovered from COVID-19. 
He asks that we keep him in his prayers and sends a big hug to his UUCM family. Ann Evans lights a candle of remembrance for Terry, her husband, who lost his fight with depression amidst this challenging time and took his own life. Anne asks that we bear witness and we ask that you hold Terry and Anne in your thoughts, prayers, and meditations. We light this candle as a remembrance and as a protest. The lives of our black and brown citizens and neighbors of our kinfolk and siblings of George Floyd and so many others have been stolen, but we refuse to let their light go out. This candle is a tribute and a protest. You are our commitment rising. And we light this candle to witness the uprising in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, a riot is the language of the unheard. May our ears hear, our hearts listen, and our hands bring balm to our hurting nation. We light this candle for all the essential workers serving in our congregation and beyond and hold them in our respect and our care knowing that they are giving greatly to serve us all. And we light this last candle for those joys and sorrows deeply felt but left unspoken and invite you in the silence that follows to call those joys and those sorrows close and to speak them quietly if you wish. We hold this silence and this silence holds us. May our listening bring forth acts of love. Holy One, known by many names and none, we hold each of our members and their family in our prayers. May they find succor in the sharing of their sorrows. May we find the strength to support them in this time. We know that a sorrow shared is still a sh sorrow, yet may it be a lightened load when we hold it with them. Let us remember that none of us are alone. We have at least one place where we can be joined in our joys and our sorrows. Let this be a place of rest. Let this be a place of peace. Let this be a place of hope. Let this be a place of understanding. Let this be a place of love. Let us remember that this place is not a physical place. It is carried in our connections and it is carried in our hearts. From my colleague and a minister that emerged from this congregation, we are the ones that we have been waiting for. We are not perfect, but we are perfectly fitted for this day. We are the ones that we have been waiting for. May we have faith in a future that is not known. We are the ones that we have been waiting for. May it be so. Amen. I'll show up at the table again and again and again I'll close my mouth and learn to listen Oh, oh, oh Center. All vessels open to give and receive. 
receiver Let's see the system brought down to its knees A Center by the poet Ha Jin. You must hold your quiet center, where you do what only you can do. If others call you a maniac or a fool, just let them wag their tongues. If some praise your perseverance, don't feel too happy about it. Only solitude is a lasting friend. You must hold your distant center, don't move even if earth and heaven quake. If others think you are insignificant, that's because you haven't held on long enough. As long as you stay put year after year, eventually you will find a world beginning to revolve around you. you. From our anthem, I am resilient. I trust the movement. I'll show up at the table again and again and again. And I don't know any phrase that speaks resilience like, we shall not be moved. But that phrase, we shall not be moved, it's actually pretty funny right now, right? We shall be firmly planted in our armchairs, in our home offices, or at our kitchen tables. We shall not stray from these four walls, no matter how stir-crazy we become. We shall not be moved from our computer screens, no matter the cries of our exhausted pupils. We shall not be moved by the length of our hair or the smells of our neighbor's Memorial Day barbecue. You thought I was going to say something different about smells, didn't you? But now, when leaders and protesters are putting rash words to our innate longings for normalcy, the phrase, we shall not be moved, takes on force. It's time we were moved, they say, back out into the world and into the world to trim our hair, to rebuild our economy, to regather in buildings 
for worship services. It's essential, they say, to relinquish our fear, but more so perhaps to alleviate their fears by sacrificing the most vulnerable. To move so that we can satisfy that craving for normalcy. And I feel these words working their power in me. I wish to be one again with you, to feel the glory of our sanctuary as we knit our voices together in song. But we shall not be moved. We shall not. Not until the move we make is a moral move, a theologically and scientifically sound move, a move that serves all humanity. So perhaps we shall not be moved is a protest song once again. Early in this crisis, I took on the project of reading the Psalms from the Hebrew scriptures, not a project really, more spiritual self-care. I had thought briefly about reading Job the biblical story that examines the plight of a poor soul tormented by plague-like illness and loss, but thought that perhaps a bit self-indulgent. So I turned to the Psalms, because these ancient words were meant to be sung, sung as lament and offered up for resilience by scared and persecuted ancestors, ancestors who yearned for confidence during their holy, uncertain times. They, the psalmists, use a different language than my own. They have different names for what I call holy, but they put words to the confusion of their days in ways that perhaps we have all been yearning to do. In Psalm 6, the psalmist writes, O oh Lord, how long? And it strikes me that in the scriptures, this question is never answered. Never answered. Just like it feels like we are living without an answer in these times. In fact, the phrase, how long in the scriptures, how long will we suffer? How long will this injustice persist? How long will this sickness go on? Occurs 30 times, and each time it is left unanswered, and we in our times echo, how long will racism infect our America and will white power terrorize black and brown bodies? How long will our nation turn a blind eye to the healthcare needs of its people? How long will this crisis persist and how long will our neighbors, our family members, and our friends fall to the illness of the body and the illness of the spirit and the violence of the fear? and power crazed. How long? The civil rights era fighters who pulled this phrase from their scriptures answered, not long, because that was the only way they could answer an unanswerable question. How long? Not long. Their only answer was honest lament followed by vigilance and hope. Honest lament followed by vigilance and hope, and our only answer is honest lament, followed by vigilance and hope. From our reading, the poet Ha Jin shares, you must hold your quiet center where you do what only you can do. Honest lament, vigilance, and hope. These poets and these psalms, they use a different language than my own. They have different names for what I call injustice, but their conviction, their conviction is my own. In Psalm 1, the psalmist calls the righteous, those who are planted by streams of water. And in Psalm 62, these same righteous are those who shall not be moved. A tree planted by a stream of water is a tree that must be firmly rooted, a tree that will not be moved, broken, beaten, beaten back by outside forces, a tree that will remain sustained abundantly from within, sustained by the water of life. Are you feeling these metaphors? Are you thirsty for that water of life? We will not be moved. 
We will not be moved by the unjust call to play with one another's lives for the sake of our hair or our vanity. We will not be moved by fits of our own exhaustion and our own aching spirits to ignore the neighbor's plight, to ignore the racism that is daily stealing our kin. And we will not be moved to enter back into our sanctuary before the move is one to heal, not harm. But we must be moved in another way. We must be awakened to honest lament, followed by vigilance and hope. And we must be moved now, especially now, by the consistent call to community, to being with one another. And we are, many of us are being moved, beautifully moved to community. In fact, I feel now more than ever that we are tasting the essence of what we mean when we say community, that we are feeling at our center, at our core, that this thing that we have long desired and lifted up as a goal is our lifeblood. It is our lifeblood, what is essential to sustain us, the stream from which when we are most thirsty, we drink. We see one another's faces on Zoom, or we engage as a community with our worship and something in us exalts and dances and lifts something that we need to feel to survive. And when we dare, when we dare share our honest truth, perhaps in community, we can be heard. We shall not be moved by the mistaken assertion that a church is a building and the irreverent use of faith for partisan gain, but we will be moved to hold on to this precious blessing that we call community because now more than ever, we know it makes us whole. These Psalms, they use a different language than my own. They have different names for what I call holy for what I know as sustenance, but their rootedness is our own. And when I say our, I mean a larger our. I mean everyone who has found this community and is yearning now for this connection. I mean our leaders and our staff. I mean our children and I mean our elders. I mean our newcomers and those still waiting at our doors. And here's the kicker. None of this works because we are perfect. We're not. We aren't there yet, and perfection, it isn't likely. The Hebrew phrase that is sometimes translated as, we shall not be moved, is in other times translated as, we will not stumble. That one doesn't work for me. Not just because I love the poetry of the former, but because I know I will stumble. I do stumble. I trip over my own words. I say the wrong thing, especially now as we are moving through this ache together. None of us can sustain perfection in the midst of this, but we can still drink from the stream of community because this stream does not demand perfection. In fact, it asks the opposite. It asks for our humanity our humanity. The words from the poet Young Pueblo are balm and testimony. This poet writes, a real sign of progress is when we no longer punish ourselves for our imperfections. Amen. And that is perhaps the community we are even now yearning and learning how to build together as we bring our aching imperfect selves to this stream, some suffering more than others and all aching and some in need and some able to give. We shall be planted firmly in our conviction to care for all souls imperfectly, but with the stream of life that is this congregation, no matter the distance. This is our sanctuary. This is our soul. And if we ever doubted our worth, perhaps these times have cemented our certainty. Perhaps these times have cemented our certainty in our worth. My rewrite of Psalm 1. We shall be like a tree 
planted by the rivers of water that bring forth a bounty enough to sustain our leaf, our faith in one another. Also, we shall not wither, and whatsoever we abundantly and imperfectly do shall prosper. Amen. May it be so. Will you reflect with me? How have you been sustained by our imperfect community? And can we be a community where we no longer punish ourselves for our imperfections? Now please rise in body or spirit, even if you are watching from your beds. Let's sing together. We shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be Fighting for our freedom, we shall not be moved. We're fighting for our freedom, we shall not be moved like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. We're fighting. For our children, we shall not be moved. We're fighting for our children, and we shall not be moved like a tree that's planted by the water. Oh, we shall not be moved. Black and white together. We shall not be moved We are black and white together And we shall not be moved Like a tree that's planted by the water Oh, we shall not be moved We shall not, we shall not be moved we shall not, we shall not be moved like a tree that's planted by the wall. We shall not be We shall not, we shall not be moved. Oh, we shall not. Shall not be moved like a tree that's a planted by the wall. Oh, we shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. We shall not be. As Unitarian Universalists, one thing that we value is the inherent worth and dignity of all. Our congregation's Mesh Cafe is one expression of this value. Today, we have a special video from our Mesh Cafe team to invite you to see and to give as you are able to sustain their ministry. Preparing Chinese food, it's chicken and broccoli and white rice. From where? From Golden River Chinese Restaurant. It's been nearly three months since Mesh had its last sit-down dinner, but in that time, we have not stopped serving our guests a weekly meal. We've started bringing in food purchased from local restaurants who are happy to receive much-needed business. In addition, the Social Justice Coalition has donated extra groceries to supplement the dinners. Each week, volunteers deliver grocery items and pack the food into the takeaway bags.
They've also begun making disposable masks for our guests, so they too can stay safe. If you would like to participate in shopping, packing, or mask making, please contact socialjustice at uumontclair.org. After all meals are packed, we deliver food and drinks to the Salvation Army, where our MESH parent employees distribute them. Well, we've been very blessed to serve from 40 to 45 guests each and every day. And even in bad weather, we've been out here and we have a system where we have a sign, receive a number, and we move it quickly because of the situation. These are veggies. Uh, let me have that and put it over here. This year, because of the pandemic, the UUCM Mesh Cafe will not take a break and will continue to deliver meals throughout July and August. Your contributions are needed more than ever, and your generosity is a great comfort to this community. Thank you for your kindness and your caring. How long? Not long. With honest lament, vigilance, and hope, we will be like a tree standing by the water, and we shall not be moved. Will you say this with me? We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are not perfect, but we are perfectly fitted for this day. We are the ones we have been waiting for. May we have faith in a future that is not known. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Our worship has ended. Let our service begin. Go in peace. Go in joy. Go in Please join us for our annual meeting at 1030. If you have misplaced the link, you are welcome to email me, and my email address is on our congregation's website. Until we meet again. Virtually or otherwise, you, you are, are in our hearts. hearts.